Well, here you are, uh, International Fight Week, main card. I know the, the, the stage doesn't intimidate you. You're used to being it. But are you even maybe a little surprised at how fast this career is progressing? Yeah, absolutely. You know, going into MMA, um, I didn't expect to be at this point this quick. But we're here, and uh, I'm excited. I'm looking to make the most of every single opportunity that I get. And that's, to me, what every single fight is. It's a big opportunity, and um, I'm just excited to perform. But obviously, you changed the plans this week, change of opponent. Uh, can you walk us through how that all unfolded? Was there any, you know, discussion of the opponent, that sort of thing? How did it all unfold? So I found out on Monday, Monday evening while I was training, that uh, my opponent had pulled out. And, you know, initially I'm just like, dang it, like 10 weeks of camp, like we're not going to get a fight. Like, I, frick, what am I going to do? And uh, it was in the middle of my workout. So I'm like, all right, I might as well just finish this workout up. So I just went and uh, finished up. and. Then, you know, talked with my manager and he was like, we think they might have a couple guys for you. Um, we'll find out in the morning what, uh, what the situation is. And, you know, so then in the morning I got a bout agreement and I'm ready to go. So signed it and here we are. Did you have any concerns with facing a newcomer, right? Because does that really propel you forward or, or prove anything for the people that are looking for you to answer questions? There, there were concerns just because for me initially I felt like I'm I'm not the type of guy to, you know, do last minute switch ups and stuff. And you know, I've, I'm very calculated, planned, and um, I felt like, you know, a little um, unsure of what to do. But you know, the more we thought about it, the more I talked with my team, and you know, I'm just very fortunate to have a great team. They they kind of led me in the right direction, and I trust those people. And you know, at the end of the day, I, I made the decision uh, for what we're going to do. But yeah, you know, I think that. I'm just always trying to build my reputation, and it doesn't really matter who I'm fighting. I'm just going out there to do my best. Do you find it challenging at all? Because it seems like unless you go out there and destroy this guy in 30 seconds, people are going to say, oh, that, that bow guy is all hype. You know, we told you he wasn't that guy. I mean, is it difficult? It seems like the expectations for you are almost unrealistic at this point. It was pretty crazy after my last fight because people were saying, oh, he had trouble taking Jamie Pickett down. He stuffed his takedown, and I was like, I took him down in 20 seconds. Like, what are we talking about here? Let's be real. But uh, yeah, um, you know, I, I think that there's all there's just going to be that expectation that's set, right? I'm 4-0 with four first round finishes, and that's what what you know people want to see me um, fail. A lot of people want to see me win, and a lot you know there's just a lot of expectations for me. I'm going out there to perform to the best of my ability, whether that's a first round finish, whether that's you know a, a decision. That, that it's not really of concern, the result. I just am going out there to do my best and everything else will take care of itself. Nice, last thing for me, you go out there and you do pick up this victory. How do you see your career progressing? Like you say, you didn't see it going this fast. I mean, are you already thinking like, am I ready for ranked opposition or is that ridiculous to even consider at this point in your career? Like, how do you see it progressing from this moment? You know, the, the main thing that I'm focused on is just improving, getting better. My, my pro debut was June of last year. So I'm 13 months into my professional career and uh, you know I'll have my fifth fight and that's, it's going fast. But I'll, again, I, I have a great team around me. I have a lot of people that are supporting me who have tons and tons of experience and I lean on them a lot. So, you know, I'm just focused on doing what I can do, getting better, improving every day. And like I said, again, everything else will take care of itself. Well, over here, um, I'm curious, like given this was such a short notice fight, how much did your, your background as like a collegiate wrestler, because you're gonna have to wrestle three, four times a night, you might not know who the final if your opponents are going to be before the first match. Yeah, exactly. That was something that uh, I referenced right away just because it's, I think, a huge, huge advantage for me. Um, going to the NCAA tournament, I'm going to have five matches over a weekend, and I don't even know who I'm going to wrestle in the second round, let alone the quarter, semis, or finals. So it, it's really nothing new, and, and that brings me a lot of confidence in uh, you know, knowing that I'm there to compete, and regardless of who it is, I've... Uh, I've experienced things similar to this before, even if they're not the same, and I'm ready to go. And when Robert Whitaker was in here, he said there's nothing more dangerous than fighting a guy with nothing to lose because they don't have anything to lose in there. I'm curious how you view your new opponent because he's five days notice. Like, if he doesn't look great, people will just be like, oh, it was five days notice. Yeah, you know, I, I absolutely think that he is in that situation. He doesn't have anything to lose. I think that this is, a, this is a great opportunity for him. You know, even if he loses, he might be in the UFC after this. So, you know, it makes sense why he would take the fight. And uh, for me, competing against people that have nothing to lose is nothing new. I, I've been doing that since I was a little kid, right? When, when I was, you know, eight, nine, ten years old, I felt like that's how people 
competed against me. And so I have thousands of competition reps that way. And when I was in college, it was the same thing. You know, people felt like they didn't have anything to lose, and uh, you know, they still lost. I'm, I'm curious, just based off of that, when was the last person you faced either in MMA or wrestling where you're, you were the underdog? Like, people would be surprised if you had won. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the last time I was the underdog. Probably my sophomore year in college, which, uh, you know, that year I made the NCAA finals. I was competing against, you know, the number one pound-for-pound -pound guy in the NCAA. He had a 70-match win streak or so. And so, you know, that, that's the last match that I think of, of as far as me being a, an underdog where people thought I wasn't going to win. And a lot of my buddies made bets on that and won a lot of money. So <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, that, that, I guess that's it. But, uh, yeah, I like being the favorite. You know, I'm going to hopefully continue to be the favorite for the rest of my career. Uh, and the final one for me, uh, I know you're young in your career, but Saturday is going to be Robbie Lawler's final fight of his MMA career. So I'm curious, like, coming up, did you, as a wrestling fan were, and, a, and a wrestler, did you have a favorite Robbie Lawler memory or fight when you were watching? Oh, yeah. My favorite Robbie Lawler memory is uh, his fight against Roy McDonald. I, I, I can assume most people thought I was going to say that, but absolutely insane moment. And uh, specifically in that fight was the moment, I think it was in between the fourth and fifth round where the, the bell rang and they both stood in the center of the canvas and Robbie Lawler just spit blood all over the canvas. And I was like, this is a freaking savage. So, you know, being on the, on the same card as him uh, in his retirement fight is, is a huge honor for me, and I'm definitely a big Robbie Lawler fan. Bo, back here to your left. Um, quick question for you. I don't know if, if you're aware, but you are currently at least sitting at likely being the biggest favorite in UFC history uh, the, the Saturday night, and obviously the situation, late fight, uh, first time in the UFC for him. Like, How does it feel that you, this early in your career, are making history? It's pretty crazy, you know. It, it makes sense to me. I think that the the math checks out. But um, yeah, you know, for me, it's it's just about doing what I know how to do and um, going out there performing to the best of my ability. And it doesn't really matter again who I'm facing. I'm just going out there to perform, and I'm ready and prepared. Perfect. I know you just said the math checks out, and I, I gotta ask you. You said minus 3,500 was good value. You said minus 1,200 was good value. How are you feeling at minus 24? Great value. Hammer it. Bo, over here. Um, again, you just got this opponent on a couple of days' notice. At this stage in your career as well, is it more about what you can bring to the table, not so much focus on the opponent, especially in this situation where, like I said, you probably didn't have a ton of time to prepare for who he is as an opponent? You know, I think that anytime you go into a fight, there's a ton of respect for your opponent. There has to be. You know, when, when I fight, um, humility is one of the, the core, um, I guess, tenets of I feel like my, the way I perform. And, um, you know, I believe in myself, so I'm going to say what I think and, and tell people my plans of what I'm going to do. But at the same time, when I'm fighting, it's really important for me to be humble. And so regardless of who it is out there, I'm going to uh, be doing the same things, and that's fundamentals and uh, just, just building that foundation and really building my reputation of how I compete. A lot of, you know, every wrestling fan knows my reputation and knows how I compete, but most MMA fans don't. And so I'm just going to continue to build that reputation, you know, like I said, amongst fans and amongst fighters the same. Is your sort of expectation after this fight maybe getting a ranked opponent after this, or is that something you sort of talk to the UFC, talk to your management, kind of reassess after this one? Because I think when you were fighting Treshawn initially, that was kind of the thought. You know, I'll for sure reassess because to me, um, this is my main focus. I'm focused on Saturday. I don't ever overlook an opponent. I don't ever uh, plan too far ahead. I'm, I'm really focused on this one. And so after it's over, uh, we'll reassess. I'll talk with my team, and we'll make a decision. And just last one for me. Um, I know you still kind of keep tabs in the wrestling community. Do you kind of feel like we're going to see more wrestlers come over to MMA, people like yourself, you know, having success, getting a lot of attention? Do you see more wrestlers kind of making that move? Yeah, I absolutely see a, a lot of wrestlers making that move. I think um, it's, it's a natural path, and, and it makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of people that I communicate with that – want to fight, you know, that being my teammates, Anthony Kassari is a 1-0 pro already. He's looking to continue to uh, improve and, and hopefully be in the UFC as well soon. So if you're a 205-er, you want to fight, hit up my boy because he can't get a fight. Um, but yeah, and then we have a ton of college guys uh, that are in there training with me at American Top Team and who you know, want to transition to fighting. Roman Bravo Young just had a grappling match last week on Fight Pass. So, you know, I think that we're going to continue to to build and I'm going to continue to do my thing and, and 
I, I want to be a team, right? Like I like having people around me that are like-minded, and so I want to bring a, a new team into MMA and, you know, perform well. Hey, Bo, um, like you said, you've only been a pro for 13 months, and prior to that you had a couple of amateur fights. Coming from the wrestling community, what do you think of the MMA community thus far? You know, the MMA community is definitely different than the wrestling community. Um, I didn't really have expectations going in, but I feel like uh, it's, it's just massive. There's such, a, there's such a big platform, and, you know, the sport's so young, and it's growing so fast that it, it's just a really cool position to be in as a fighter. I think as a fan, it's, it's a really cool position to be in as well because you're always seeing new, unprecedented things. And so, you know, I think that... Um, Obviously, I have the support of the wrestling community, and uh, you know, hopefully, I continue to perform well and, and gain more support from the MMA community. Like, what are your thoughts on the extreme fandom? Right, like, uh, like you said, like if you don't go in there and start this guy within 15 seconds, you're a bum. Or if you don't take this guy down in seven seconds, you're a bum. Like, what, like, what are your thoughts on that? It's interesting. It's a really interesting perspective to have because you know most people that are saying these things have never fought, never trained never performed in any way and so they, they really can't relate. So for me there's no judgment going towards them because there's no there's no basis or foundation of 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 their ability to relate to that situation. So I wanna you know meet them where they're at with grace and understand that, you know, that's their mindset. And for me, it really uh there's there's not much I can do about that besides, you know, be friendly and um compete to the best of my ability, hopefully put on a show and Wrestling and unfortunately, wrestling season, hunting season overlapped. So I didn't, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't hunting a lot growing up. And when I uh, retired from wrestling, I realized, you know, I have a lot of time on my hands. I can set my schedule the way I want it to be. And so, you know, I thought about uh, getting a bow and, and starting to get into archery hunting. And I've just really enjoyed it. I think that everything about it is, it really speaks to me. And you know, the discipline, the commitment, the uh, technique, um, being able to uh, go hunting and, and bring home meat for your family, uh, you know, to support them and stuff is, is such a cool thing. And so for me, that's something I'm going to do as long as I can for the rest of my life. It's definitely something I'm really enthusiastic about. And yeah, anything I do, I'm going to try to get better at it and improve. And so, yeah, I'm always watching videos, studying, um, archery, watching hunting videos and stuff like that, because I just love it. Bo, Thanks, just over here, at the back here. Um, just curious, obviously, there's a big middleweight fight at the top of the card. Um, just wanted to get your thoughts on Robert Whittaker versus Drukas Duplessis, especially given the, the title implications as well. I think it'll be a great fight. I think um, both those guys have a, have a lot of experience and you know, have been able to have great performances. the same thing if I saw the number one and two guys in the world at chess compete. It's just exciting to me because I love seeing excellence. I love seeing people perform at a high level. And that's what both those guys do. You know, they both, again, have a ton of experience and are able to do amazing things. So anytime that uh, you match two guys up like that, it's going to be exciting. Thank you. Hey, Bo. Bo, Bo, back right here, here in the back. And the right. Um, you, you have a lot of wrestling experience, and you had mentioned before you've only started MMA just about two years ago. When you reflect on having the second pay-per-view opener of your career and it's International Fight Week and where you are now, what moment stands out for you most that you most appreciate? You know, I think that I wouldn't say there's a, a specific moment that I appreciate more than any others. I would say that what I've appreciated the most about the past two years and in getting into MMA is just being able to spend a lot of time and moments with the people that I love the most, that being my family, my wife, 
um, my teammates, my management team, all guys and uh, girls that I'm super, super close with. And I just feel very fortunate and very blessed and lucky to have such a great, have such great people around me. And so I just cherish every single one of them. And, you know, right now we, we got, I'm going to have about 40, 50 people coming out this weekend to support me. And I just love them so much. I just want to uh, perform well. And uh, yeah, us all being together is the best part of it. I want to segue over to Brandon Moreno. You actually had interviewed him recently. What was that experience like? And did you pick his brain a little bit behind the scenes? Yeah, I absolutely did. You know, again, a guy that competes at such a high level that has been UFC champion, who, who you know, is just such a awesome person, a fun guy to be around. And I feel like uh, very grateful to have had the, the chance to, to just talk with him, pick his brain and understand where he comes from, his mindset. You know, that's, that's something that's super inter interesting to me is mindset of, of these guys, not only in MMA that, you know, are, who are champions and compete at a high level, but in all sports and all disciplines and in every area. And so whenever you get to talk to somebody like that, I'm really all ears and just grateful for that, those moments. And your passions as well, not only hunting and MMA, but you also find yourself cooking a lot on the grill. Where did that love first start and uh, what are some of the things you've enjoyed most cooking? You know, um, I grew up from a uh, ninth grade through 12th in Texas and uh, barbecue is just such a huge part of the culture there and you know so my, my dad was always grilling smoking meats and that was the same you know you'd, you'd go over to a friend's house on the weekend they'd do a brisket and so that's just something that was really uh, ingrained in me culturally and something that I loved and I think again w what's the best part about that is it's not grilling the meat and not you know making something taste amazing but it's it's who you're with and so for me being with my family with my friends the people that I'm close with, being able to share that with them. That's what I love about it the most. Thank you. Hey, Bo, back to your left. Um, there's always one clip that goes around, and it's of Islam Makashev uh, thinking that he can take down uh, Jordan Burroughs. Uh, what do you think of that, and do you think it would be a close match, and does he have any chance of taking down Jordan? Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, no, no, he doesn't have a chance. Um, Jordan Burroughs, seven-time world champion, you know, one of the greatest – not only American, but greatest wrestlers, period, in the in the world that uh, anyone's ever seen. So, you know, I don't really think that's a competitive uh, situation, given that Islam doesn't really come from a wrestling background. You throw him in Sambo or in MMA, it's, it's different. But in wrestling, it's not close. And then can you talk about more, like, the growth of ATT Happy Valley, obviously being a, a somewhat of a new gym? Can you just talk about that more and how the growth is for you there? You know, ATT Happy Valley, we've been growing growing a ton. You know, we have a, a great coaching staff there with uh, Ayulton Barboza and, um, you know, him running the, the jiu-jitsu. And, you know, we're going to continue to build. We have uh, um, three pro fighters right now. We have a bunch of amateurs coming up. And the, the gym's small, right? We have less than 10 guys, but we're looking to continue to build and uh, really take wrestling-based um, athletes into the next level of MMA and help them grow and, and perform. So if you're a wrestler out there that is interested in fighting, you can absolutely hit me up and you know we have room on the team to grow. But uh, yeah, it's just a start. So you know, same as me in my career, it's on the up and up, ATT Happy Valley. We're gonna uh, be one of the premier gyms in the world shortly. Thank you. Bo, just right here. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Bo, right here. Uh, going back to your interview with Brandon, I mean, you know, you got some reporters over here trying to work and you're here taking our jobs. I was just wondering, is this a more common thing you want to get involved with to be on our side of the table? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I just really appreciate um, learning um, anything, but especially about mindset. Mindset's something that is super interesting to me and, and how people deal with pressure and perform and what they, what they do day in and day out to be able to... Um, just be who they are and so you know i'm starting a little podcast with um better which is a, a sports betting platform but i'm going to handle a lot of the media and uh as far as the combat sports go and i'm just looking to interview people and kind of get insights in their mindset but uh definitely not i mean if you guys got pointers for me let me know shoot me a dm <laughs> hey man i got you uh, to talk about it though do you have any guys on your list right now that you'd really want to start interviewing first there are a ton of people, a ton of people, a ton of fighters. Um, I would love to interview, mm, let me think. There's a lot, but uh, I don't want to name names and leave people out. But, you know, a few fighters that I'd be interested in interviewing, probably, you know, I like Corey Sandhagen, I like Sean O'Malley, I like Cheeto Vera. All those guys are in the same weight, too, which is, is really interesting. 
Um, but anybody that's, that's doing things at a high level, again, doesn't have to be MMA. It could be uh, boxing, it could be music, it could be business. I, those are the people that I want to surround myself with and learn from. Random question. Do you plan to grow out your hair again anytime soon? The hair thing is interesting because it, it, uh, it takes a while to get it to where I had it. And it's a lot of commitment and effort. And uh, I'm fighting and turn around pretty quick, so I don't really have time to let it get to where I want it to be. So I'd have to take some time off of, uh, of fighting, but uh, I don't know if I'm willing to do that, so probably not. <laughs> Oh, just last thing. Um, first time a lot of us met you was last year at International Fight Week on Radio Row. You were coming by doing the interviews, and you kind of predicted this is where you would almost be a year from now. If we could ask you again now, where do you think you will be next International Fight Week next summer? International, International Fight Week next summer, I plan on, at minimum, being you know fighting ranked opponents and uh, getting right up in there um, in title contention. And so... You know, hopefully um, I can continue to get fights. You know, the most important part about that is is getting fights, getting opponents, getting the right opponents. But I think at that point, I'll be closing in on my goals of, uh, you know, being UFC champ.